when it comes to Forza and racing wheels, there has always been a lot of confusion and problems. It is really, really difficult to attain a nice configuration that allows you to feel the car and to be able to control it without the wheel going crazy and always sending up in a total mess. I decided it was time to finally test each and every one of the force feedback options provided by the game and come up with a long-term solution to be used throughout all cars and all terrains in the game. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Forza Horizon 4 for feedback settings, based on my experience playing it. That way, we're going to be able to get a force feedback that plays as you would expect from any other sim racing game, or at least approximate to some of them. The following guide has been made to apply to the normal steering difficulty setting. So, that said, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is go to the controller settings menu and open the advanced section. Then you want to go down and look for the force feedback scale. This is the main thing you want to set up. Turn everything else off in the force feedback section except for this and put its value somewhere between 30 to 50. Apply it and then exit the menu and start to drive around with a regular car. I'd recommend a real wheel drive car, since they are the most basic and easy to analyze ones when it comes to force feedback. Go outside and test how the wheel reacts to things like oversteer, bumps, understeer and grip levels of roll. Then fiddle with the numbers until you get the right amount for your taste. Once you have been it for a while and start to get the feeling of the car, you will start seeing that the car behaves very good compared to other sim racing standards, but it's still no asset of course our project cars. I ended up setting it at 20%, since 13 above are too strong for my taste and I feel like they are stressing the wheel too much in my opinion. So again, just try it for yourself and see what feels better to you. This guy is only orientation. Once you have found the sweet spot in your force feedback scale, then go back to the force feedback vibration. Uh, it sounds really self explanatory, but this one is a tricky one. Uh, vibration transmit different things to the force feedback, such as dirt bumps, terrain irregularities, crashes to some extent, and a bunch of other things. Let's say um, it's more of a, an immersion effects or environmental awareness to some point. In my experience, setting this parameter similarly to the force feedback scale is the best option for me. Uh, maybe even a little below it, but not by much. It helps the overall wheel sensations feel balanced and somewhat realistic. So overall, I would set this to a very moderate level and not be too overkill with this, because you don't want to overshadow the force feedback scale that you set up before. Next, we have the center spring option. I always set this to zero. It's just what it says, a spring, like a bungee spring found in cheaper arcade style wheels. This parameter replicates just that kind of feeling and though it can be somewhat useful when racing at higher speeds, I personally don't like it and I think it makes the force field feel very arcade and very false. It also makes the wheel out to center when you are parking or a station in some place and it really gets me out of the immersion. If you are looking for this kind of realism, I would suggest uh, just turn this off completely and forget it forever. Wheel damper scale is a very important parameter in the force feedback, as it transmits the weight of the wheel to the user. This makes heavier cars feel heavy and smaller ones to be more nimble. But this comes as a double-edged sword, since it can be very immersive and comfortable or to be a total pain in the arse when set to too strong. I personally find it more useful when using a car that doesn't really have much wheel response when driving it or if the steering of the wheel is just too light for my personal taste. Generally speaking, when you have a good force feedback scale set up, Heavy cars will feel heavy enough regardless of the dampen. But this is more subject to personal taste. If you tend to drift, which is a thing you'll be always be doing in this game regardless if you personally do or not, I suggest to turn it all the way down 
to not be an inconvenience when doing so. I usually leave it on a very low value when I race or drive normally, so I would suggest that you try to set it up between 0 and 10. Force feedback understeer is a very tricky one to talk about. Theoretically, when you use it, grip levels close to the understeer effects uh, are more heavily felt, but usually I find this to be exaggerated. The regular force feedback scale does a pretty good job transmitting this kind of sensation, so I wouldn't really recommend it to set up at a very high value, if any, because I have it turned off and it feels just good to me, and it's from my experience from other games, it just felt the same, so I don't really see the need to use it. It only makes the wheel feel more twitchy and uncontrollable in some cases, which is kind of strange but I'll leave this open to your own judgment. Then we move to force feedback mining on force. This is by far the most confusing thing to configure, and I think this is what has been giving people the most trouble in past force games. The way it works is kind of strange. Supposedly, the lower the value, the more aggressive the forces you feel when taking turns in the wheel, Usually they come with some sort of input lag in my experience, making you lose control of your car because of how strong these forces are compared to the rest of the things, even if they are set to very similar values or even less strong values. You may think that if this makes the force feedback so aggressive in lower values, then it'll make these forces lighter when going up, but it's quite the opposite in a way, let me explain. The feeling curves is more moderate when you set high values, but because it's set to such high values, it overshadows the settings you have priorly set up for the regular force feedback. So it makes the entire setup kind of worthless, and when you try to even it out, it just goes back to being a disaster like it was before. I haven't tested it too much though, so maybe you find better results than me with it. But the game feels just right without it, so I wouldn't make much sense to mess around with it, if you already feel comfortable with everything you've got. So, this game wouldn't ever feel as good as other big simulation games, but at least it is playable now, with some re some extent of releasing in these force feedback settings, so I guess this is a step forward. I hope this video was useful for you, and don't hesitate when sharing this video with someone you know that may need this. So thanks for coming by, see you Horizon. Well, that was kind of a, a weak outro, so yeah, anyways, see you in the next video, guys.